Welcome to the PlantMichiganGreen.com Gardening Show. Presented by the Michigan Nursery and Landscape Association. Now here's your garden show host, Dr. Bob Shutsky. Hello everyone. Welcome to the PlantMichiganGreen.com Gardening Show, brought to you by the Michigan Nursery and Landscape Association. I'm Dr. Bob, your host for the 2021 gardening season. Tune in every Saturday at 4 p.m. through August. We will share garden insights, feature guests from Michigan's green industry, and answer your questions submitted through PlantMichiganGreen.com, Ask the Expert. Our hope is to make the most of your outdoor living experience. During the week, you can log on to PlantMichiganGreen.com, your landscaping and horticulture resource, to pose gardening questions, find a professional horticulturist, locate a retail garden center in your area, or become aware of the rewarding careers in Michigan's green industry. We will spend today's show with Adam DeLamalier, Michigan Nursery and Landscape Association Director and Director of Support for Troy Clogg Landscape Associates, LLC. He will be with us after a short break and tell us about careers in the green industry. So stick around and get into the gardening groove on the PlantMichiganGreen.com Gardening Show on Newstalk 760 WJR. Welcome back. We're here with Adam DeLamalier. MNLA Director at Large and Director of Support for Troy Clogg Landscape Associates. He's going to share some information about careers in the green industry. Hi, Adam. Hey, how you doing today? Pretty, doing pretty good. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. So, it's been a good so, summer. Well, good. Hey, before we get started, let's. could you give us a little bit of background on yourself in terms of how you, uh, how you prepared yourself and, and how you got in? introduced to the green industry absolutely it's a little bit of a long story um but it's uh i'll make it shorter i'll give you the cliff notes uh never really did anything other than landscaping in my life uh grew up my dad was a retired operator engineer he had his own company for a while um just really always knew it started getting a paycheck probably when i was 13 or 14 um from a landscaper into summer i was also a football player so i would go and i'd work all summer and then when camp started I would go play football and then I'd come back and I'd work a little bit during high school late fall um, and then so I did that all the way through high school when I got through high school like I said I was a football player so I went to Michigan Tech to play football didn't work out so I came home and had to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life and I said well I think it's going to be landscaping ultimately ended up in Michigan State where I met you studied horticulture there got out and then uh for the first probably 10 years, 15 years of my career out of school, I worked in like the operational side of things where that's primarily what I did. I built stuff. I did that design and sold, I, and I had my own company in that time. And then uh, a little bit later after that, I turned into a, a sales guy. I worked at Unilock, um, sold brick pavers and retaining walls, worked with training there. And then uh, about three years ago, I, I made a move over to Troy Clog, and now I'm working more or less in the administrative leadership side of things um, for a large snow removal and uh, uh, landscape company. We do everything. So you know me. Does that kind of give me the rundown? It yeah. Wasn't too long? <laughs> no, actually, it's pretty good. And the question I have, what, what do you love about the landscape industry? First is the people. You know, I, I am uh, very grateful uh, for all the people that I've met along the way and continue to meet. Um, you know, people throughout my entire journey there spoke into me, and I'm extremely grateful from my father to my uncle to you to Troy and, and, and just a lot of different people throughout. So that's, the, that's probably my favorite thing. Um, so, I mean, that, that's kind of... I don't. I don't know how you'd say that. Um, so I, I'm gonna. I'm going with that answer. Yeah, good. Hey, one of the questions and one of the comments that we often get about from young people coming into the career is, how do you deal with the weather? You know what? I think this is where I start to get a little bit maybe crazy. And the the number two thing I like about landscaping after the people is I think when you work in landscaping, you work outside. I think you become more in tuned 
with the world around you. I think you're world fuller. Like I can drive down the road with my wife and I can see a maple tree and know it's a maple tree. I can see a nice landscape, I know it's a nice landscape. And uh, my wife may not see that. A lot of people out there may not see that. I think it's true with the weather too. Um, you know, you, you, you can learn to use the, le the weather as an advantage. Now right now we're, we're a year round business. We're bigger in the winter than we are in the summer. Um, but before I came here, my winters were like times to almost grow more. I, I, I read a lot more in the winter. I wasn't as busy in the winter. I would work out a little bit more in the winter. And, and it would, you'd kind of be in tune with the seasons where you, you start in the spring, you, you figure out what you're doing kind of with your life in the summer, and you, you get really good at it in the fall, and then you got a chance to, to uh, evaluate it in the winter. So I think it helps you to they can't have a start and a stop. I, I don't know how someone working in a factory could do the same thing over and over without a start and stop. So that's how I always dealt with the winter. It's a little bit different now. And I don't know if I like it or not, but it's 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 different. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting when quite often people talk about working outside and they compare it to manufacturing or they compare it to sitting in front of a computer in an office and uh, they're looking out that window and and longing to to be outside and and actually what happens we have a fair amount of people that that come into the landscape and nursery industry as a second career they they started in something they they always liked being outside they garden with their family and and for some strange reason they didn't think they could make a living out of working outside and so they pursued another occupation and then and then when they actually found out the truth about the landscape and nursery industry they uh, they came and and uh, there we had a lot of students at MSU who have have uh, come from other careers yeah, you know, and it's it's unfortunate and fortunate that that's the case. And, you know, I go back to the people. It, it it's, a, it's a shame that young people, there's young people out there that have a bet for being outside and working with their hands and doing that. And it's a shame that more people don't support that, recognize that, and then support it. And they say, oh, you should do this or you should do that instead of trying the landscape industry, the green industry. And, you know, I, I go back to the people. I had people in my life that said, hey, this is, th you can make a life out of this. You can make a career out of this because it's, it is special and it is, a, it's different. It's hard, you know, I mean, we'd be lying to the audience to say it's not hard to be like in the elements and physical labor, but, um, but it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, it certainly is. And and it's interesting, unlike you, where you had a family directly involved in the industry, we've had a whole bunch of students that have come to us in, in the horticulture program uh, who started cutting grasses, cutting grass for their neighbors. Their, their parents said, okay, you need to go out and do something. And so they wind up uh, starting to cut lawns for their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and that, and it grew. It grew to the point where they were hiring their friends to mm -hmm. uh, uh, to to do their their landscape maintenance. And that that kind of expanded into putting in somebody's patio, and yep. uh, and and eventually led to their their coming to MSU or or Oakland Community College or one of the the horticulture programs that are out there, and uh, and developed it into a career. Absolutely, and there's so many stories like that. That story of like starting cutting grass and then doing the next thing, the next thing, you know, that's one of the greatest things about the industry. When, when you're an established company, it's also something that's not the best because sometimes you lose job to those guys because they don't have the overhead or whatever. But it's it's that's something that's great about this industry is you you can start a business with relatively little and you can grow it and. It, it, I mean, it kind of sky's the limit. There's a ton of stories like that. Yeah. Hold those thoughts because we need to take a short break now. So stay tuned for more PlantMichiganGreen.com gardening show on Newstalk 760 WJR. Welcome back to more of the PlantMichiganGreen.com gardening show with your host, Dr. Bob Shutsky. Welcome back. We're here with Adam Delamalier the MNLA Director-at-Large and Director of Support from Troy Clog Landscape Associates. 
So Adam, tell us about the diversity of uh, opportunities in the green industry. Okay, um, absolutely. So like if you listen to my kind of my story, you know, I went from operations and sales to to administration. That's just one, that's one path. Some people could spend all the time in there and that's in like one segment. I'm a, I'm a design build snow guy, right? Um, if you're maintenance, you can do a lot of different things. You could get into tree maintenance. You could get into ground maintenance. Um, the green industry also has all the growers, you know, nursery growers, flower growers. Um, it's really amazing at just the, the depth and the, and, the, and the breadth, I guess the breadth would be a better word, the breadth of what the industry is and all it entails. Um, and within all that, you can specialize very specifically or you can be, you know, a little more wa- wa- uh, wide ranging, a little more well rounded. Um, and both are both are, uh, are are good, and there's opportunity there. And that's just the stuff that's like, you know, quote unquote, the green industry. Then you also have all the other stuff, the human resource side, the the finance side, the mechanic side. The at this point in time, the three D design side, and the the social media side, and the marketing side. All that comes into play and is becoming more and more. Um, important and there's more and more opportunity there. You know, that's, you bring up a good point. And when we think about multiple uh, professions or disciplines, for example, if you think about just the construction, we have designers, we have engineers, we have, have uh, heavy equipment operators. Everything that you think about in terms of construction is involved in the green industry when you think about the business aspects we have everybody from from uh uh, the business operations from sales from uh, uh the the organization to the scheduling so again when we when we think about for example supply chain i have a uh a a friend's um the son that went into supply chain but but uh, uh, and when it came down to it, he was thinking about large companies, but he got involved in the supply chain in the landscape industry, dealing with the construction materials and plants and other things. And the same thing, like you mentioned, marketing. Stacy from, from uh, uh, Spring Meadow last week, her background is in horticulture, but she's strictly involved in the marketing aspects and the promotional aspects of those particular plants. Yeah. So, so whatever you think about in terms of, of business, engineering, uh, design, creativity, it's, it's wrapped up in our industry. I, you know, I got, a, I got a degree in horticulture, right? I haven't used that degree like all the time for 15, 20 years, but that degree helps me do other things. You know, and it, it, it's amazing just the breadth of what you can do with this. I mean, um, it, you know, you mentioned supply chain. We had a kid last summer or last winter that worked with us kind of in a pseudo internship role. Um, goes to Michigan State, kind of in that same thing. And he worked with us in the summer. And we're like, hey, do you want to work with us in the winter? Everybody was remote, so he's able to do kind of both. And, you know, it, it, it touched in what he was studying in school. So it's yeah. cool. It's really cool. It's and you know if you have knowledge or you have uh, interest in things and you also like the landscape industry, you can tie them together. You can really tie them together and um, kind of find a home for yourself. One of the things that that uh, uh, when I was on campus, I would get get uh, uh, visits from from people looking to change careers, and they 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 all they they were in an occupation. They had a had a, either an associate's or, or bachelor's degree, and they were asking what did they need it to do in horticulture? Did they need another degree? And uh, uh, some people may not like my answer, but my answer was no, you don't need a degree. When you look at the specific information that deals with, with uh, plants, we're talking about soils, mm-hmm. we're talking about botany, the horticulture and the difference between botany and horticulture is botany is this pure science of plants. Horticulture is how we use those plants and the science involved in producing those plants. And then the insects and diseases. And so if you put together a handful, maybe five, six courses, you can get 
a lot of the information that was necessary to integrate into the landscape and nursery industry. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Um, I'm fortunate to have a degree, but it's not the only way. It's important to learn and, and to be educated, whatever that education looks like. You know, when, when I when I was spending time with you in college, one of my one of my favorite stories is coming home on the weekends with my dad. And my dad would say, Hey, what did you learn this week? And I'd say, I learned this, this, and this. And he'd say, Well, and I'd say, Dad, what did you do this week? And he'd tell me, and I'm like, Well, this shouldn't work and that shouldn't work. And I was learning the hows and the whys. So if you put together, like you said, five courses and you do that while you're working, then you really can start to kind of gain some traction in, in changing a career or, or learning something new or different. Yeah, the, 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 the good thing about um, just taking courses, for example, and you don't have to involve in, in, enroll in a degree. In the uh, uh, Oakland used to have a really nice program where it, it was at a community college level it introduced a lot of a lot of people to the industry in a, in a part time basis. What I mean by that, they could go to classes in the evening. They could maintain their their uh, employment and and, and uh, paychecks during the day. The other thing is that, and and I'm not sure exactly what the status is, but Wayne Community College was developing a horticulture program, and uh, and they they got some uh, uh, funding to develop a horticulture center down in their in their campus area. So there are places in the on the east side of the state where you can kind of increase your your knowledge. You can get the necessary background. Uh, to, de to develop a really rewarding and, and uh, uh, financially acceptable career. Yeah, you know, and I, I would say this, you have those options there. You got all sorts of options online now. It's way different than it was, you know, for, for us growing up. Also, look around those companies in your area that you can maybe reach out to and talk to somebody. Um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest doing that in the middle of summer when everybody's super busy, but this is this is, I, I talk about the people all the time there's people that like to help and there's people that would say yeah you know why don't you do this or do that um i mean i have a special experience where that happened to me over and over again but i believe that experience is out there for other people if you just ask yeah you know that's true and when you think about it for our listeners uh and this this is is uh, useful information for our listeners for if the listeners have a, a son or daughter who is who is interested in this in this particular career, there are all sorts of opportunities for people to to let you try it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and the whole idea of our internship program that we had at MSU is it put people out into the industry for an abbreviated period of time, and in many cases that was the the uh, that helped in the decision making. Uh, for their particular career. Yes, I do like this. No, I don't. I remember visiting you out in Colorado yeah. in, uh, when you were working for, for, uh, uh, for Tom Foxman. It, it was a fun visit, and, yep. and to, to see you grow at that internship was amazing. And, and I, I'm glad you brought that up, and hopefully this embarrasses you a little bit. Because people say, oh, you're going to be a landscaper, you're not going to have a life, or you're going to work, do a trade, you're, whatever. That's not true. Life, life's what you, what you make it. My greatest adventure in my life was going to Colorado that summer, and that was directly because of landscaping. It took me there, and because of you, a person in the industry that talked me into it. If you remember this, and I love this story, and since... Uh, been thinking about this a lot. Um, two weeks before I went out there, I got offered a job by the person that I'd worked for before then and then after, and he was going to offer me like $10 more an hour, lots more hours. And I went to you and I said, you know what? I said, I don't know how I pass this up. I'm going to make way more money. I'm going to save way more for next year. And you looked right at me back then and you said, Adam, you're going to work the rest of your life. Go have fun. And I did it. And I learned a lot. And I got to live a life because Landscape and let me do it because I, I, I took a chance and I knew people that kind of spoke into me. I that's I love that story and I really appreciate you telling me that because I've never been back to Colorado since. 
<laughs> yeah, right. You know, and it's true when some of our students go out of state for for an internship, you know, you you think about it and say, okay, where where do you think you're gonna you're gonna live and raise a family? Well, in Michigan, and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what area of Michigan? Well, probably around my family's uh, properties, and say, well. Okay, so go out and explore because when you explore other opportunities in other areas, you learn a whole lot and bring that back to, uh, yep. uh, to Michigan. And so we've benefited tremendously from, from people like yourself and, and other students who have gone out, ventured, and now are, are very prominent and, uh, um, and successful members of the, of the Michigan industry. So. Yep. Hold, again, hold those thoughts again. We need to take another break. And so, so stick around, and uh, Adam will continue with, with opportunities in the green industry on News Talk Radio 760 WJR. Welcome back. We're here with Adam DeLamalier. MNLA Director at Large and Director of Support for Troy Clog Landscape Associates, and we've been talking about careers in the green industry. Okay, Adam, so so tell us about uh, some of the labor issues that that we're ex we're experiencing in the industry. So just like every everywhere you hear, you know, there's some pretty dramatic labor sh labor shortages right now. Um, people not looking for work, people not um, qualified to work. Um, we're doing okay where we're at, but um, it's it is very very tough. And I mean, I talked to a guy this morning, and he said they're typically they run three crews. They're running running one crew because they just can't find a people. And you know, this isn't a new problem, and this isn't a just because of COVID problem. This has been going on for a number of years. Um, I haven't. I wrote an article, I think, in 2012 that started to scratch that I, I I saw this coming, and I'm not the brightest guy. But I could see it coming, and it's gotten worse and worse and worse, and then everything that happened last year with COVID um, has made it even that much worse. And then it, it poses a question, like, you know, why is that? And it, it has a lot to do with the perception that landscaping or the trades have had forever. Um, people don't want to work that hard. People, people don't think there's a career there. And I, I disagree, and I think that us in the industry – need to really start to promote us as a skilled trade because that's what you are um you know if you can if you under you know if you can do all the different things we talked about all the different varieties of things if you can do that after a year or two you're starting to build a skilled trade um you're i mean y you are and it's a shame when people don't um value what what the people in our industry do um because they don't think it's a skilled trade so I know that in MNLA, they're doing a lot of things to elevate that. Um, I'll let you explain it, but I know we just got approved on an apprenticeship program. Um, and then that also goes into, like, you know, the CPI, uh, CG, uh, CGPIPs and the other types of certifications. So all these little things can help to elevate the industry a little bit. I think more and more people will come there to understand. But you should talk about that apprenticeship. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, what... what um you bring up a good point about the what's behind this this industry and profession. And one of the things that that I understand the term skilled trade, but there's a lot of of there's a lot of background that goes into every career trade. You you look at science and technology. You look at in this particular case, horticulture, you look at business operations. And so to sometimes when we hear skilled trade, we look at that as a different level than, mm -hmm. than professional, which, which is it's not the case. And so there's a, there's a lot of background. We just take the, the career as we develop, we take a different path than going through purely academics. And one of the other thing is that the my friends who who are in the industry and uh, we all got into the industry because we liked working outside we liked working with our hands and and there there was a sense of uh, there was a reward in in terms of putting together what we did but all my friends 
who we started in the field with are now business owners, are now, now uh, uh, operations directors, are now, are now faculty members at universities and community colleges. And so when you, when you think about the, our industry, to some it may seem as a, as a skilled trade, but it's a lot more, and it's a lot more as you progress through the industry. Yeah. And, and so when you talk about the apprenticeship program. Hey, before, at, before you get into that, I want to add to that a little bit. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. but No, that's all right. You know, just, you know, we talk about the guy just starting to cut the grass, and then he does something else, he does something else. For all these guys, everybody out listening or that look at landscapers, just because it's easy to start doesn't mean it's easy to be good at it and to turn it into a career. But it's like that with everything. I mean, I you know, I, I, I started with plants. I love plants. I turned into brick. Now I don't even see a brick. But every step of the way, I want to learn and I want to do my best and, and do that. In this industry, every, every job will do it. But you can really build a career if you take that, like, I want to be a professional. You know, I want to be uh, a craftsman to work with you every day, regardless of what you're doing. Hey, yeah, and it, it's a good point. And the other thing is that in, in every profession, there's continuing education. Yeah. And that's what's so important about being a member of, uh, of an association, that, yep. that there's constant updating. There's constant... Uh, education. In fact, just just alone, if we look at what happens at the the Great Lakes Trade Exposition and all the people that that are coming to speak and present, and they're bringing new ideas, new techniques, uh, even from the standpoint of Michigan uh, Department of of Ag and Rural Development, when we're talking about some of the pests that we're dealing with, we look at at uh, when we had Deb McCullough on the on the show. What Deb does for our industry in sharing information and helping, uh, helping the, the the not only the businesses that are that are controlling and impacting the the pests, but but the the listeners who are in the in the consumers and the property owners who are being impacted directly by these pests. Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. there's a there's a lot happening. There is, and, so, and, and you can be as you can be as professional or as unprofessional as you want. But you said a key thing there: continuous education, continuous growth. Yeah, and that's what the the certified green industry professional program that was started by the Michigan Nursery and Landscape Association was a was a a, a program designed for continuing education of industry members and so and through that led to this new apprenticeship program and the probably the most significant thing about this new apprenticeship program there's a landscape management technician apprentice and a nursery management technician apprentice and these are have been sanctioned by the u.s and the michigan departments of labor so we put together the program uh uh Lindsay, who who worked on the the uh, uh, dealing with with the feds in the state, and we put together a curriculum for this. And the curriculum, the interesting thing about the curriculum, it's a curriculum that has all the pieces that you would see in some type of degree program, but it's developed in such a way that that the apprentice will be studying while they're on the job. And uh, or if the if the a person is is interested in getting into this industry through this apprenticeship program, they're going to get all those pieces. They're going to get all those pieces of those five, six courses that I I talked about before. And uh, uh, and again, help them build their career. This is going to be this is going to be great. And 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 I think that it's like so nice to have because you can speak to people now say hey we have an apprenticeship program the way I foresee using this you get somebody in that's young you say hey if you work out we'll put you through this apprenticeship program and in a couple years you'll be able or year a couple years you'll be able to become certified here's your path you know people want to know that there's a path and this is a great way of doing it and then the other thing I like about it is um, you know I've got I got involved in training over the years and uh most most people don't have the time or the talent to train. 
So this is a great way of just creating something like a boilerplate of how you can train those people to have those courses, like you're saying, to get people the right type of knowledge so that they have a great foundation for their career. Right. Yeah, and it and it's true. Even even when we we have high school students that come on on campus for the FFA programs or the the other types of of uh, agricultural education programs, it's it's a uh, uh, it's gratifying to see these people who have the passion for what they're doing. And, that, and, that, and it goes a lot, as said, it's like, for example, that was so interested in, in working with you is your passion, your passion to do these things. And uh, I could share stories about what I heard from Tom about you working in Colorado. And, oh, I just got to mention it. It was valuable for you to go to Colorado, okay, and learn. But the most important thing about that was that you came back to Michigan. So as much as it seems glamorous to go on internships out of state, we want to build the, build the professionals yeah. in Michigan. And uh, uh, so you go out, out of state for a little while, okay, but we want you to come back and uh, and establish some firm roots. Get that yep. firm roots here in uh, in Michigan. If we start using the whole horticulture <laughs> analogies for personal growth, then but we're going to need more time. Yeah, but, right. No, yep. no, you know it's it's so it's it, the thing about passion. You say that, and is you're right. I had a I, I have and had a great passion for the industry, but um, passion will burn out. And you need the people that help to give you that purpose, because together, passion and purpose they go hand in hand. And and you know, my purpose now is hopefully someday, in um, you know, 20 years from now, some guy says, "Hey, I I remember talking to you when I was 20, and 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 you really gave me that. You 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 made me go get a, or you led me to get this internship or this career. Um, because I I, I I'm so grateful to people like you and my dad and my uncle and Troy and I mean I could go down the list um, for what you guys did for my career and my life yeah hold on we're going to take a the one last break and then we'll come back and we'll finish this up so stay tuned for more of the plantmichigangreen.com gardening show right here on 760 WJR Now back to more gardening with your host, Dr. Bob Shutsky, on the PlantMichiganGreen.com Gardening Show. Here's Dr. Bob. Welcome back. We're here with Adam DeLamalier, and we've been talking about careers in the green industry. And uh, so, Adam, if, if there are people interested in, in getting into the industry, uh, especially young people, how would you suggest they get started? So... Um Okay, so you got two things here. You got the young people, but first I want to talk to the parents. Look at your kid and see, and and, it, and if he's got he or she has a bent to be outside to do stuff that might be uh, green industry related, and support it. Support it. Don't don't say hey, that's not a life, that's not a career, that's not a real job. Um, support it because you don't know where they'll go. Um, and then for the young people, if you're a high school kid. Look around to see if there's people that you can talk to to ask questions. It's a little more challenging um, to get the high schoolish type job because of some of the regulation in Michigan. You're kind of limited on some of the work you can do than like um, I could do growing up. But ask people. Um, people like to see young people with ambition. Um, if you don't know anybody, you can reach out to the MNLA. Um, they actually have complimentary uh, high school um uh, memberships and you can connect with other people in the in the industry that way maybe find a mentor you know I mean, there's sometimes you don't have any idea who to talk to when it comes to to like a career um, that would give you uh, you'd be able to go to that GLTE which you had mentioned that a little bit earlier that's like a trade show in the the um, in the winter up in Lansing but so that the, so the first thing is parents support support your kid understand that not everybody is gonna go the same route there's different routes encourage them to get an education if that's with or without a degree get an education um, and what I mean by that is that continual education if you're young um, ask people around if you don't know anybody around go to go to the MNLA look there and then after that um, 
get a job, show up, <laughs> show up, and 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 show up and work. And, and, <laughs> That's important. And, That's yeah. important. Showing up is a good thing. <laughs> Showing up and working and understanding that you ask questions to learn, not to talk. You don't just ask the same question over and over again. Actually, try to learn. Um, and you'll be surprised, you'll be shocked at how far showing up and working will get you today. Um, yeah. Hey, you know, Adam, you bring up a good point. In, in 2022, in January, the latter part of January, the Michigan Nursery and Landscape Association will have the Great Lakes Trade Exposition. It's back in person and it's in Lansing. Mm -hmm. And I encourage, if anybody's interested or remotely interested in the industry, to attend that trade show because you'll you'll be exposed to the education, you'll be exposed to the vendors and the diversity, and it and it's a great way to to get an introduction to this and and uh, and help you make a decision whether it, this is the industry that you would like to pursue a career in. Mm -hmm. Yep, and if you go to those things, you know another little another little I guess tip for young people is is be confident but be respectful. You know, um, you know, guys like me are impressed when, you, when a young person walks up and introduces themselves and asks them some, asks some thoughtful questions and is respectful, versus somebody that comes up is like, "Hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, you know, you think I can work here? Like, <laughs> no. You know, I mean, I, I get a kick out of it. If anybody out there is interested in, in a career or potential contacts, you can contact Adam. And yep. myself through the the plantmichigangreen.com uh, website. Ask the expert, and we'll get information and hopefully connect you with with some people in your area that may be be looking to to uh, provide mentorship or or some other contact in the industry. And so remember to tune in every Saturday at 4 p.m. through August for the best information and advice to maximize your outdoor living experience. And during the week, log on to plantmichigangreen.com, your landscaping and horticulture resource, to find a professional, a retail garden center, pose your gardening questions, and explore rewarding careers in the green industry. That is in Michigan's green industry. That's all for this week. I'm Dr. Bob wishing you sunshine, happy gardening. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk again. You've been listening to the PlantMichiganGreen.com Gardening Show with Dr. Bob Shutsky. Presented by the Michigan Nursery and Landscape Association.